Hello ladies and gentlemen, Slim Phoenix here. I have been using my shopsmith for a bunch of woodworking and the uh, joiner blades have gotten dull. And I set up a jig. I used, I think his name is William NG's video on setting up the, the sharpening jig. And I thought I would walk you through my process for sharpening uh, my joiner blades as well as the jig that I had built for it and kind of explain why it worked and why I thought that was the best uh, best thing to do and the best setup. So I've got the shopsmith here. It's got a, a four inch jointer on it. I already have the blades pulled out but I'll kind of walk through. Um, if anybody's curious, it is a Magna uh, four inch jointer. So I can go through there and what I'll do is I'll show you a little bit how to, how to remove those blades without too much hassle and then uh, we'll go over and I'll show you the, the jig that I have and how I use it. So sorry if my lighting's not the best, uh, I am working out of my garage as you can tell which is my my shop for the time being. Um, so here's the, the jointer, you can see the blades pulled out and if you look in here you can see there's three, three uh, bolts that hold the, the blade into this crease here and then on the end there's uh, an adjustment height adjustment so that once you get the blades back in you can adjust them and then tighten them down with with the others so usually in order to get the blades out you have to loosen these up uh, probably wouldn't hurt to actually remove these these screws or bolts all together and then you almost have to to pry this this retaining plate out and then you can get the the blades out of there so that's the the simple process pretty easy to uh, to get the blades out of there all right, so here's the sharpening jig. I've got the, the blades loaded into it already. Uh, it's a really handy setup. I didn't have a, a board that was wide enough, so I went through and I set up each board individually and then I just glued them together and uh, made sure that they were, they were uh, smooth. So the way this works is I've got about a 40 to 45 degree cut into this two by four. So, and the curf on the blade that I used was an eighth of an inch. And these blades are approximately an eighth of an inch thick, so it worked out really well. They, uh, as you can see, they, they stay in there pretty well. Um, so here's the, the blades for that. So essentially, you set these blades in here. And because the, the angle that you've cut into this 2x4 is the same as the, uh, the angle on the blade, this blade surface will be flat. And uh, the other board here, I cut the, a groove into so that it would fit, uh, I think it's half inch pieces. So I can plane down a piece of wood that I have and I can make it different heights. And then I can just set that in. So if I need to adjust for a little bit of uh, angle on the blades, I can just replace that. So, but this is uh, what I have for now. Uh, the sharpening stones that I use I've got a, uh, let's get that out of the way, I've got a DMT diamond sharpening stone, I think it's 220 and 325 grit. So I use this for most of the, uh, the roughing to get uh, the material out so I can get it at the angle that I need in case there's any nicks or things like that in it. And then I've got some, uh, some Shapton uh, ceramic uh, wet stones. I've got a 1,000 and a 5,000. Um, I couldn't justify getting a 8,000 or a 12,000, anything like that. Um, if I find that it's not sharp enough for, for what I need, then maybe I'll see about springing for, for the higher grit whetstones. So the way that I use this is, so that you have two options. So you can put tape on this, on this, uh, this support here, and then you essentially move your sharpener, or excuse me, your, uh, your sharpening stone over your blades. But if you put tape on here, this is eventually going to wear through that, depending on how, how long you have to do it and uh, how much material you have to remove. So what I've found works best is I use uh, painter, painter's tape. And I usually just wrap like the back half of it, or whichever half I'm not going to actually be using to, to sharpen uh, the blades. So I'll wrap that with tape, and then 
that it seems to be a lot better because then you're not having the abrasive of your sharpening stone wearing through your tape. So then you can go through, and I'll do the same thing with the uh, with the shaftin stones. So that's that's kind of the the setup for this, how that works. Uh, I do need to sharpen these, so I'll uh, probably include a little bit of that. So let's get down to it. So one handy trick that you can do is to use a sharpie and color in your blade and that way you can see once you go over it with the stones you can see where it's actually removing material okay so I've got these blades pressed in here I believe they are all bottomed out so they won't move and as you can see there's enough side to side tension on it that one so we can move it over here just so you can make sure that it doesn't slide around while we're trying to, to sharpen it. And I've got uh, some nicks in here. It's a little rounded out uh, from the previous owner. I haven't had uh, this for very long. I think it's only been a month, maybe two, that I've had uh, the shopsmith and this joiner. So I did go through and sharpen them once, but it was kind of a good enough kind of sharpening. So I'm going to go through and move some more material for that get them actually sharpened down to where I need them. Okay, so we're going to start with the uh, diamond sharpening stone and because of the uh, the motion that you're going to be using, or I use anyway, it's a little bit, it's mostly sideways with a little bit of, of down. So the, the board back here that's resting on is going to slide this way. So what I want to do is when I put the tape on, I want to start in the back and move forward and I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so we're going to be using the uh, 220 grit on this, so because because the uh, we're going to be using this side, I'm going to put this wrinkle on the back side to where it uh, to where I start working my way down. And you usually only need one layer, depends on how much you're going to be working on it, how much material you're going to be moving, so on and so forth. Once we get down to about where we want it, I'll then level it back out. Again, the wrinkles on the, the back side of this. And there we go. So now I've got this wrapped, and we can put some. Uh, Spray some water on the 220 side that we're going to be using. Oh, right over here, and we'll get started. So I'm going to start on this end here. Periodically, I'll uh, spray this off. I got a bucket down here. Spray that off. Let some of the some of the, the metal particles fall into the bucket. That way, that uh, sharpening stone doesn't have a bunch of uh, extra metal on it. I'm not putting too much pressure on this. I need to uh, <laughs> finally getting down to some, some grit and basically just letting the, letting the sanding stone do the work. If I wanted to, I could clamp this down or screw it down. Which I actually think I might do now.
All right, so we got the rough sides down. Now we're going to smooth it out. We're going to start with the 1K and then uh, end up with the 5K. We're going to do the same thing we did with the with the diamond sharpening stone. I'm going to wrap it with painter's tape. We got that wrapped. I'm gonna wet it down. And let's get down to it. Alright, so we got them uh, all sharpened down with the uh, all the way up to the 5,000 stone. So the last thing you want to do is you'll usually create a, a little bit of an edge on the back side of these. So what I like to do is just lay it on here. And work that, uh, that edge that's rolled over to the back side here. You always want to be careful when you remove these blades, by the way. If it comes down to it and you really need to, I usually just grab a punch, something I can push on the side of the blade and get it to stand up out of there. Okay, now that we got these all sharpened up, we can take them over and put them back in the jointer and uh, do the adjustments on them. So for this procedure, I need is, for me I need the Allen wrench to tighten the screws and uh, make the adjustments, and a straight edge ruler. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to level the infeed table on the jointer. My garage slopes this way a little bit, so it's a little hard to uh, keep that on its side sometimes. Find that nice, even point. There we go. So that's leveled out. Now we can put the blades in. We may have to lift this uh, spacer a little bit. I like to flush them on the back side here. And then once I get it in, I usually just uh, run the center screw down a little bit. Just enough to make it snug so that blade won't fall out. There we go. There's the next one. Back side. Okay. Last but not least, third 
blade. down just a little bit. There we go. I got all three blades in there. So from that point, uh, the nice thing about this one is that as you can see I've been spinning it really freely. So what you, I, with the ideal adjustment when the blade comes to the top with a straight edge across the top of the blade it should make contact and move it about an eighth of an inch. So that means that you're, you're really close to level and uh, that'll be the best adjustment for it. So as you can see right here, we're not hitting anything. So, makes fine adjustments. So these screws you have to back up. All right, so there we're moving just a little bit more. I need to bring that back down a little bit. As you can see, it doesn't take much. Oops. Let's see if come on now, work with me. All right, that's perfect on that end. Okay, so. This end. No contact. So the nice thing about this setup is I can use the wrench to turn it and see where my adjustment is at. So there's a there's perfect for that end. Let's make sure we're still good on the other end. So, that looks good. Let's tighten her down. So, more or less, you rinse and repeat for the other three, or excuse me, the other two blades so that you get all three of them set up the same way. And uh, you also want to check it after to make sure you're, you're still in alignment. And then from there, you can loosen it up or readjust it if you need to. Once you get all three uh, once you get all three tightened down and your adjustment's still good after tightening them down then you're good to go and ready to rock. good to go. Alright, so that'll pretty much wrap up the, uh, the sharpening of the, the joiner blades here. I'm going to put the, the fence back on and go through and make sure everything is uh, good to go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave any comments below, any questions, comments, or concerns. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you like, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.